Hey guys, today I pulled out a couple pretty rare, pretty weird, pretty exotic revolvers to talk about. If you're familiar with my channel or if you're a subscriber, you probably already know that I kind of have a thing for Matebas. I have a website that I run called MatebaFan.com. I've um, got several review videos, made a bunch of shooting videos, things like that. But today I thought I'd pull out the crown jewels of my Mateba collection and talk about them because like every Mateba, they're extremely rare. There's no information out there about them, and I'm just really proud of them. They're the centerpiece of my Mateba collection. And these are not them. These are the Mateba MTR-8s, and they were formerly the most prized Matebas that I owned until earlier this year when I imported and finally took possession of two Mateba 2006 M's. I had to personally import these myself because none were ever brought over by anybody else. So I finally took possession of them earlier this year, sometime around February, I think. And at that time, I believe these were the only two in the entire United States. At this point, I have a friend who's also a Mateba collector, and he has a couple. So I think right now you're looking at one half of the total inventory in the United States at the moment, which I think is pretty cool. I'm trying to get too smug about it, but, you know, it is kind of cool to think that you have two of four 2006 M's in the country. But apart from that, I'm really excited to have them, mostly because they complete my Mateba handgun collection. I have everything from the MT-1 all the way up through the Chiapa Rhinos. The only thing I'm missing, really, is the Sei Unica um, Grifone, which is the carbine. I'm still looking for one of those, but as far as handguns go, this was the missing piece of the puzzle, and I finally got them earlier this year, so I'm really excited about that. First off, I encourage you to go to my website, MatebaFan.com. There I have a decent write-up of the Mateba company and Emilio Ghisoni's history, but in summary, basically, the uh, the company started out as a pasta kneading machine company, and this is sort of a side gig. Emilio Ghisoni decided to start producing some guns. This one came out in the late 80s, early 90s. It was a successor to the MTR-8. And Gisoni's big drive when, when designing guns was always to put the barrel as low as possible. So what he did with the MTR-8, obviously, is he put the cylinder way out front so he could keep the barrel real low. This was his first attempt on the 2006M at the 6 o'clock bore position, which would later become sort of his trademark with uh, the Sei Unica, the Chiapa Rhino, which he also helped design. They all have the same layout with the barrel at the very bottom. It's designed to reduce recoil in that way by having the bore axis so low. It keeps the muzzle flip down. I'll talk about shooting impressions later, but that was the uh, the main point of having this design. They were produced in the early 90s, followed up by the Sei Unica, like I mentioned, which was the semi-automatic revolver. And I want to stress that this gun is not semi-automatic. It's just a double-action, single-action revolver, just like a, a Colt, Ruger, Smith & Wesson, anything like that. It's just the barrels on the bottom. This one is a semi-automatic revolver. And I say that because a lot of people still think the Chiapa Rhino is a semi-automatic revolver for some reason, but this one is the only semi-auto that he designed, and it's probably the most most famous Mateba. The 2006M is famous with a lot of people because it was featured in some anime movies, the Ghost in the Shell series, I believe. I'm not really an anime fan, so I can't really attest to all the details on that, but uh, it does have some fame from that. You can also actually buy toys, uh, airsoft guns or something like that on eBay that are based off of this gun, off the 2006M. Basically, they were made in limited numbers in the early 90s, succeeded by the, the Sei Unica, and because of that, super hard to find. As far as the basics on this gun go, it's pretty simple and straightforward. It's a six-shot, 357 Magnum revolver, double-action, single-action, like I said. You can cock the hammer yourself if you want. It does not cock automatically. It's not semi-automatic. Uh, wood grips, all steel construction. There are a few different options you could get with it. First off, there are a ton of different barrel lengths. This is a six-inch, and my other one's a six-inch also, but it came with a four-inch barrel, too. And technically, I actually could have bought it with a 2-inch barrel, but unfortunately, that's not legally importable. There are minimum barrel length restrictions on what you can import. So I had to settle for just the 4 and the 6, but that's fine. Um, you could replace the barrels using this specialized wrench, which was something that Mateba did later on with the Sei Unica also. They had a wrench that's basically identical to this. And the way this works is you stick it in the end of the gun, line up those pegs with the holes, and then you just twist it off. And I'll be honest, I haven't actually attempted to change the barrels out on either of these. First off, this one doesn't seem to have that capability. It has a threaded barrel at the end, which I'm not really sure what the purpose of that is. But second, because I know from experience with the Sei Unica that I've tried changing the barrels on several of those that I have, and it's real risky. If it hasn't been taken off before, what can happen is you try to twist it off, and those little pegs on this wrench are not very strong. So you, you twist it, the barrel seized on there, and you twist it, and then it breaks. And it's not a catastrophic failure or anything. It doesn't damage the gun, at least in my experience. But um, I did break a wrench once because those pegs sheared off. And so then I didn't really... I had to construct one myself to get the barrel off eventually. But uh, it was just kind of a bummer, you know. These things don't grow on trees. So rather than, than risk breaking it again, I'm just going to be content with having the 6-inch barrel on there, which I think looks fine anyway. 
maybe one of these days I'll get up the nerve to put the four inch on so I have a four and a six at the same time, but it's not super important. As far as barrel lengths, there were there were a ton available. Like I said, there's two inches all the way up to about 11. Um, I've got the four and six. Another customizable feature are the grips. You could get different grip sizes. This one I believe is the small. This one is the medium size grip. And then there was a larger one that was sort of like a target grip. Uh, the medium definitely fits better, I think. My finger's going to hang off the bottom here, but they both feel pretty decent. I'll talk about ergonomics in a minute. And also, I was really excited about this one because it has what's probably the most rare Mateba accessory out there. This gun is super rare, and then a barrel weight at the end has got to be even harder to find. So I think that's pretty cool that I have one of those on there. Weighs about three ounces. I haven't taken it off, but they're pretty hefty. This one weighs 46 ounces and this one here weighs about 43 or so. So for comparison to Python, do my usual size comparisons here to give you some idea of the size there. They're roughly the same size I would say. And then I also have my Beretta that I always use for size comparisons. It's one of the more, one of the more common guns that I own. So that gives you some sense of the size of these things. They're not a small revolver at all especially this one with the bigger grip and then when I have the six inch barrels on there. Next I'll talk about ergonomics, which on this gun are actually pretty good I think. The grips feel good, especially on this larger size, the medium grip. This one, the smaller size grip is a little bit small for me and I have decently sized hands I think. Um, so my fingers kind of hang off, but it actually doesn't feel bad. It has this nice beaver tail sort of thing going on right here and just the overall shape of the grip has a nice swell to it I think. But my preference is definitely the larger one. Feel in the hand is good. This one obviously is front heavy. First off, you have the six inch barrel, but then with that weight out there too, uh, it's a little bit top heavy maybe, but not excessively so. So really overall feel in the hand is pretty good, I think. And with the six o'clock bore position in this barrel weight here, it really does a lot for reducing recoil too. Uh, I'll show you the sight picture. Sights are good, but they're a little bit sort of low profile. It's kind of hard to see that there. The blade in the back, you can move it by unscrewing that screw or loosening it and there's another one on top so the sights are pretty adjustable the front side is just kind of low it doesn't really protrude a whole lot which it's fine it's it's pretty visible you can still see it but it's just kind of different I'm used to revolvers having a, a taller front post um, as far as controls go the cylinder release is really interesting on this gun it's this little lever right here you push it forward and then the cylinder comes up and over don't usually see that in a revolver do you the barrel is underneath, as you can see, and then the cylinder comes out over here, which is, it definitely takes some getting used to. Once you get used to it, it's actually pretty nice, because what it does is it clears up the cylinder completely. You can, you're not running into the grips or anything like that. You know, you have full access to loading and unloading. There's the uh, projector rod right there. Got a bunch of snap caps in for the trigger demonstration in a minute. Um, so that's how the cylinder release works. It's pretty handy. It does seem to have a habit sometimes of just flipping down when you don't want it to. I think with a regular revolver it's a little more natural because it flips down and out and gravity is keeping it down for you. Whereas with this one, a lot of the time when you load it and you're kind of messing with it, it just sort of like wants to flop around a little bit more. So that can be a little frustrating, but it's not a big deal. Uh, and then the hammer is kind of interesting also. It's got a little bit of serration. Sorry for all the rabbit hair. I always have to apologize for that. Um, has some serrations there. It's pretty easy to grip. And what's interesting about it mostly is just the shape. It's so flat. And it sticks out here. It kind of reminds me of like a dog tongue or something, the way it, it's just sticking straight out like that. But it's easy enough to use and grab. And that's really the, uh, the extent of the ergonomics on it and the features and everything. Build quality on these, I'll address that real briefly. It's, it's good, but I wouldn't say it's fabulous. It's not really, it's not, obviously not going to be at the level of like the Python or the Cord or a Manurin or something like that. It's at least uh, modern Smith & Wesson levels though. It just doesn't really have the premiumness, maybe, of some of those, some older Smiths and older Colts and things like that. But I'm not going to say it's poorly made. Really, what it mostly comes down to, I think, is just the design is a little bit crude. And it's kind of hard to explain um, how I come to that conclusion. It's just, I don't know, the pieces just feel a little bit simplistic in a way. But, you know, this was a very small time company back when they were making these. So you can't really fault them too much, I don't think, for that. So overall build quality, you know, out of 10 as a quart, I would maybe say this is a 7 or something like that. Not the top of the line, but not bad by any stretch either. Next I'll talk about shooting impressions, and this gun really shines at the range, to be honest. it's uh, I like it a lot better than the Se Unica, mostly for the fact that it's just simpler. The Se Unica, with its semi-automatic mechanism, 
I don't shoot them very frequently just because I'm afraid of something breaking. These guns, though, they're just very, they're pretty simple, they're robust. It's, it's kind of hard to imagine anything actually breaking on them, so I do enjoy shooting them. And when I do, I'm really pleased with the accuracy and the shooting experience. The trigger's great. I'll just show you the double action first. Remember, I have snap caps in there. So I just pull the trigger. It's really smooth. It's super smooth. And you can usually stage it pretty well. I'm kind of having trouble here because I'm at a weird angle, but you can usually kind of bring it back to just before it breaks and then pull it the rest of the way because it has a really good feeling to it and you can feel exactly where it's going to do that. Single action is also great. It doesn't move at all, really. It's, it's very crisp. It's not a hair trigger at all. It's probably about three pounds, maybe, which is fine. But really, it's a pretty great trigger, I think. And that contributes to the accuracy. The sight picture, like I mentioned before, is fine. It's not the best sight picture I've ever used, but it's also, it's totally serviceable, so it works well. And I pulled out a target from one of the times where I've shot it recently. Just to give an example of what it can do. This was from about probably 13 yards or so, two-handed, unsupported. Um, probably mostly single action, I don't really remember, it's been a while. But, um, so this is about what it can do, and I mean, I think that's really great accuracy. I'm not the world's best marksman, but I'm, I'm very happy with that. This one... Same thing, just uh, it's extremely accurate. The sights were fortunately set up for me already, so I didn't really have to mess with that. Recoil is great on these. First off, this one, which is my main shooter, which is why it has the tape on the, the cylinder there so I don't scar up the cylinder with the cylinder drag line. This one has a pretty hefty line on it, and uh, don't want that happening to my other one because it's almost mint condition. Um, but the, the barrel weight up here, the low bore position, 357s really do feel sort of like maybe a 9mm, 38 specials feel like 22 or 32, some sort of wimpy caliber like that. It doesn't really reduce recoil as much as the Rhino, I don't think, and even the Say Unico because it has almost all that weight in the, uh, the semi-auto mechanism, I think recoil is a little bit less than these, but it still is very pleasant to shoot, doesn't flip as much as other revolvers, it's just not, not as significant as uh, some of the other Matebas in the Chiapa Rhino. But overall shooting experience is great with this. I put 357 magnums through it, probably about a thousand rounds of 38 special, no issues, super accurate, really just a joy to shoot at the range. And I've actually brought other people out to shoot this gun, and they're all really impressed with it. So um, I think Mateba did a great job with this. And honestly, Mateba's always been, every Mateba I have is exceptionally accurate. So one thing that Gisoni knew how to do was design a barrel. So very, very nice experience at the range. As far as criticisms go, it's kind of hard. There's, there's really no point to it. I mean, these guns are just sort of, they are what they are. Um, if I had to come up with something, probably the ergonomics of the cylinder release are a bit funky. The way you push it forward, which I mean, it, it works fine when you're shooting it and you want to pop it open, you just push it and the cylinder comes out. When you're actually dealing with loading it and unloading it, it's just a little bit annoying the way it flops around. You have to very intentionally hold it so that it's being held down by gravity, whereas in a normal Smith & Wesson or something, you know, gravity keeps it down for you. Apart from that, they shoot great. Um, they're unique, interesting, all those sorts of things. So. So honestly, apart from the uh, the cylinder release and, and loading it, I can't really think of a whole lot to fault with the gun. So in conclusion, Mateba 2006M, the centerpiece of my Mateba collection at this point, the, the final piece of the, the puzzle that I needed for the handgun collection. There aren't many out there. There's a guy on YouTube named Silvio who has a couple videos about his 2006Ms. He's in Italy. But apart from that, I don't really think there's a whole lot out there on the internet at all, period. So, just hope this was educational. It's a cool gun. I've shot them a lot. And this one, not as much. Uh, I just like this one because it has the barrel weight on it, mostly. And the grip feels a little better. But I've shot them a lot. No issues whatsoever. Super accurate. Just great at the range. If you haven't seen it already, I do have a shooting video, a couple shooting videos on these. Um, I have one where I'm dual wielding them, and then another where I'm just shooting this guy here. So, my Mateba 2006 M's. Like I said, I do hope to do a Mateba video where I talk about every gun the company's produced, do comparisons, things like that. Um, got some good feedback on my shooting videos too that I should have done a comparison with this and the Rhino, this and the, the Say Unica, which I think are good ideas, and I'll try to get that accomplished at some point. So yeah, thanks for watching. This is Mateba 2006M, 2 of 4 in the country, and I'm super happy to be an owner. Thanks for watching.